let's go and have another look at some optical illusions and animate them to see if we can work out how they function. I'll then explain what scientists think is the explanation for these visual treats. Off we go. Firstly we have an optical illusion that was inspired by an actual object. The object in question being a wall outside a cafe in Bristol, UK. Well, that's not quite true. It was first described as one of the kindergarten patterns published in Psychological Review of May 1898. It was then rediscovered in 1973 by Steve Simpson, who worked in Richard Gregory's lab. In the illusion we can see layers of bricks alternating black and white, with a mortar between the bricks that's grey, so in other words the mortar is a colour between the colours of the bricks. Each layer of bricks is offset from the layers above and below, and the effect is that the bricks look like they get thinner and thinner towards one end. In other words, the layers of mortar which are perfectly parallel look like they converge towards one end of the wall. A lot of the aspects of this illusion are actually critical to the appearance of the narrowing of the bricks. Firstly, the offset of the bricks is important. It's critical that a white brick on one layer doesn't line up with a white brick on the layers above and below. As we can see, if I move the alternating layers of bricks, when the bricks line up vertically, the illusion disappears. Also, and quite strangely, even though it's only a tiny portion of the wall, the mortar is vitally important. It needs to be a shade that's somewhere in between the two different colours of bricks, or at least something similar. This can be seen if I change the colour of the mortar to either black or white, then the, again the illusion disappears, as it does also if I change the size of the mortar unduly. So why does this illusion work then? Well, actually we don't fully understand this illusion, and it also asks some important philosophical questions about the nature of perception and belief. But let's look at what we do know. In the brain, dark and light colours are perceived by different neurons. So different neurons are used to perceive the different bricks. And because the layers of bricks are offset, different parts of the mortar are perceived as being dimmed or brightened. This causes us to perceive the bricks as slight wedges, and all these wedges are put together to make it appear that the lines of mortar are converging. Just before we get on to our second illusion, I make a new science video each week exploring this strange and wonderful universe that we live in. So if you enjoy these videos then don't forget to subscribe and hit the like button. In our second illusion for today, I have a question for you. Here we can see a line disappearing behind a grey block, and two lines coming out of the opposite side of the grey block, one red and one blue. My question is which line, red or blue, does the black line line up with? Most people will say that the black line is in line with the blue line. But if I remove the grey bar, we can see that it's the red line and the black line that line up. So why should our perception be confused like this? This illusion is called the Poggendorf illusion. And again, we don't fully understand it, but one hypothesis as to why we think it works, as it does, is that our brains have a tendency to expand acute angles. In other words, to make sharp angles appear bigger than they are. The grey bar, the big grey bar, forms an acute angle with the black line. If we see that angle as bigger than it is in reality, then that would make the black line line up with the blue rather than the red. There's only one problem, however, and that's if I rotate the whole illusion so that the thin lines lie vertically, the acute angles are still there just rotated slightly. However, we can clearly see that the illusion is now broken and we can see which line the black line coincides with. So really we may have to come up with a better explanation for this illusion. Okay that's enough for today's trip into the weird and wonderful world of optical illusions, but until next time, thank you for watching.